I have a big new project, Open Badges in Higher Education, and I, with the generous support of the MacArthur Foundation, I'm working closely with a, a bunch of players in the ecosystem of uh, getting badges, for instance, up and running in the major learning management system and models of practice of using them. In my own work, the work I, I actually showed today, uh, by working with Google Course Builder, it's a very nimble 5,000 lines of code, we're able to really run with badges. And I showed an example of what we mean when we say an evidence-rich badge. The, when you earn a badge for completing my course, if you don't enroll for credit, that badge, uh, when you push it out to Facebook, which many people did, and you click on it, it goes to a page that's just chock full of evidence. And if it's the course badge, it actually contains the badges, the three badges that you earned along the way. And if you click on one of those badges, you can see what information the earner chose to include in their badge. And this is a, a point that I've been just making everywhere today, is that the badges have to contain evidence. That evidence needs to be unique and valued. And when it is, some pretty amazing things can happen. And so, uh, in my case, uh, actually all the work that a student does in my class, they have the choice of including that actually in their badge. And that when you click on, you know, assignment 10, the, the Wikifolia that they completed opens up. They can choose to put the peer promotions that their classmates said if they endorse their work. If they got more of those peer promotions than anyone else in their group, their version of the badge says leader. They can choose to actually include the things that their classmates said about their work. It says the number of comments. It says the number of uh, endorsements they got. It says their score on the exam if they choose to include that information. So the, the thing that people aren't quite, it's a lot of people aren't, are just beginning to grapple is this notion of they, have to, they need to contain evidence, but the learners need to be in control of what happens with that evidence, how it's curated, how it's annotated. Learners can assemble badges in a digital backpack, and they can actually have different sections of that backpack, one for this employer, one for this employer. And then they can add, they can annotate that information. So they can choose how to represent themselves and choose when and where and what social networks to share that information over. Then employers can, I, I'm really excited about that, is, is that if you think about employers uh, searching for uh, talent, right, or, or reviewing people, well, HR people are really busy people. We know that in addition to resumes and vitas now, they're overwhelmed by the expectation that uh, they'll be, they're, they're, they're going into social networks, like 70, 80% of them say they do it routinely. Well, a badge will employ, allow an, a, a busy HR person to skip all the other stuff. All the competencies, all the, the, the badges mean something very specific. They mean something specific to students, they mean something specific to employers, and they mean something specific to institutions. So in this just storm of information that's out there, it, it sort of allows the, the information about competencies and skills and potential to sort of elevate and, and be more readily found.